In the last video, we started discussing the exchange content filter. We looked at the SCL rating system and configured the filtering thresholds. Today, we continue configuring many other options this filter provides. So far, we discussed the configuration of global thresholds that apply to all emails. However, it is also possible to configure per mailbox thresholds. On processing an email, the content filter will first look for the recipient mailbox thresholds. If found, these are applied. Otherwise, the global thresholds are applied. This is configured using set mailbox. For example, this overrides the junk threshold for a user mailbox. Now, the global junk threshold no longer applies for emails addressed to this user. Likewise, we can override the quarantine, reject and delete thresholds. This slide shows the set mailbox parameters used in each case. The global and mailbox options use the same naming, but are defined a bit differently. The mailbox parameters can be set to null. Thus, the enablement parameters can take one of three possible values between true, false and null. True and false explicitly turn the threshold on and off, overriding the global setting. Null disables the mailbox override, allowing the global threshold to be applied. So, if a user doesn't want the content filter to delete any emails, we disable the delete threshold. To remove the override and apply the global enablement settings, change this to null. The same is true for the threshold levels. These can be set to an SCL value between 0 and 9, or null. So, if I wanted a user to have a delete threshold of 6, here is what I do. And to revert the user to the global threshold, we set it to null. Of course, we will normally want to manage groups of users. We do that by combining set mailbox with get mailbox. Here, I configure users by organizational unit. The last per mailbox setting we'll discuss here is the anti-spam bypass enabled flag. This disables email filtering altogether for a specific mailbox. We now go back to more options configurable at the content filter. To begin, we create a keyword list with phrases identifying legitimate and spam emails. These are referred to as good and bad words. If the filter matches a good word, the email is assigned SCL0. If a bad word is matched, the SCL is set to 9. Spam emails are then filtered based on the threshold settings already discussed. We manage this list using the content filter phrase commandlets. Here, I add two phrases. Influence identifies whether the phrase is good or bad. And this is how a phrase is removed. Another content filter list is the one storing recipient exceptions. Here we list recipient addresses whose emails are to skip filtering. We configure this through the bypass recipients parameter. Here I add two addresses. Now I remove one of the addresses.
For more details on how to work with lists, check the first part of this video series. The last thing we will configure is the rejection response. Earlier, we configured the rejection threshold. By default, this will block spam with a response saying message rejected as spam by content filtering. This can be changed to something more informative. For example, we could put a phone number that would help reporting any problems. We do this by setting the rejection response parameter. This completes our content filter discussion. Today, we worked with more options that control this filter. We configured per mailbox thresholds, created a list of phrases identifying good and spam emails, added recipient exceptions and customized the SMTP rejection response. In the next part, we continue working with more anti-spam filters. Subscribe to the WinDeveloper YouTube channel for the next part of this video series.